people have forgotten the humanity in others, especially yeah. online. Totally. Right? So I love, love what you're saying, you know, like this essence of bringing love to the table, even if you don't have something in common with somebody and talking it out and just listening, mm -hmm. understanding where they're coming from. You don't have to believe the same things, but like, I can love you and disagree and I can listen. It's like, this is how you bring love to the table. It's so easy to get trapped into curating your social media platform to all of your likes. Um, and I don't mean likes as in what you're liking pictures, but your interests. Because as soon as there's opposition in your viewpoint, there's like, there's a breach. 100%. And you're uncomfortable now because it doesn't follow the, the flow of your timeline. And it's like, okay, report, unfollow, block, don't want to see that. And what that does is reinforce beliefs that this is the right way without having a conversation with the other side or seeing what the other side is doing to, like you said, to get the common ground. If we have tunnel vision in only one way, we're so far from the middle ground that we're unaware of what middle ground is. I just had such a compelling conversation with my friends, Christina and Cash. If you clicked on this video or you clicked on this podcast to listen to, you probably know who they are. I have been friends with Christina for many years now, and I have loved getting to know Cash as well. Christina is such a humble person. She's so strong and has gone through a lot in regards to this topic of cancel culture. And so that's why I'm so excited to sit down with them and have this conversation because their dynamic and what they both bring to the table on the topic is so fascinating and like just really so much that we can learn from it. The growth mindset that Cash has and just like the strength that Christina brings to the table of all she's gone through, I think is like a wonderful topic to discuss, especially when it comes to our own personal lives, not just lives online as, you know, not many people are going to be having that same experience, but your personal life as well and how we can grow from the mindset that what other people think about us really matters versus that it doesn't and that you can create your reality within your mind. You can live in a way that um, brings yourself to a place of having growth and joy no matter whether everyone likes you or not. So I think that this is a wonderful topic. I love this conversation. There's so much to talk about. Honestly, we could have gone on and on and on. And I love the specifics that we get into on things that she's gone through as well as just the overall arching theme of what we can learn from such a topic. Um, we also talk about their relationship and their dynamic together and there's just so much more. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into this conversation. I hope you enjoy it. All right, we are on. Thank you guys so much for being here. It has been so nice getting to see you and getting to spend time with you and Andrew. Honestly, my heart is so happy and we loved waking up to your kids this morning. <laughs> it was just wonderful. Yeah, it's been such an amazing time just being here already. Kids waking us up in the morning, getting to connect with them and just getting to experience like what it was like to be a child and that energy they put out, you know, is very much well receptive and received. So, well, they love hanging out with you guys. They're yeah. so happy you're here. They're actually sad you're only here for a couple of days. And I told Sandy not to go over in the morning. I'm like, don't go over. We don't know if they're sleeping still, but he still went when I wasn't looking. Yeah, <laughs> we're coming back, and he, we loved it. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say Sandy. See, he's a character. All your all your kids are special, but you know Sandy and Elvis definitely got a good connection with them. He came by this morning and just gave us a little morning check, just see what we're doing. I'm like, hey, yeah, we're just <laughs> we're just in bed, nothing, <laughs> nothing going on. Just, uh, but that was fun this morning. We got a chance to play basketball with them yep. and connect with them. That play was play awesome. games. Yeah. They're so good with kids. Okay, well, firstly, let's just get into a little bit about your land and the projects you're working on. And your garden is like amazing. It's totally blown me away how quickly you've done your garden. Please explain, how do you do it? What are you up to? <laughs> Thank you. Well, we moved to Hawaii a year ago, and um, that was in the long-term plans. Uh, for some of my long-term followers, they might know that I ran Rawfully Organic for 11 years. So I do have a background in growing things, organic produce, organic distribution. Um, and I put together a plan for me to have my own organic like kitchen garden, but I wanted it to be my perfect garden. And so it took me six months to manif well, to go from the manifestation part of it and creating the plans versus 
making it an actual yeah. garden. So we had to find the right crew to assist us in bringing this to life because when you have the amount of land that we're on, you have so much room to work with and you have to find that true intention for specific areas, especially if you want to have them zoned for like produce or your right. citrus and all those aspects. You want the right wood, the right compost soil, you want the right seeds. And so once you get into the sourcing and then you figure out your design, then you can get your hands dirty. But the planning part took 90% of the energy. Executing it probably took 10%. That is seriously amazing and it's so inspiring. We have those goals, like Andrew and I, we have like goals to become as sustainable as we can within like five to seven years. But it's a little bit slower process for us, for sure. <laughs> I, that's, I think it's just beautiful to be able to encourage people to grow their own food and to be able to do it yourself. I mean, that's, that's the lifestyle we want to live, right? And so for me, getting to grow my own food and eat it is just... It's the ultimate gift, yeah. right? There's there's just no greater feeling. And I know you're doing so great over oh, here. Like totally. I've seen what you're doing and I'm just like, I love it. It's oh, so great. totally. It's not, there's nothing better than like food sustainability, picking your own food from your land. I'm just like blown away by your garden. It was so beautiful. As, as long as I've known Christina, this is something she's talked about constantly and has been part of her passion. And she's really held on to that vision through obstacles and overcoming a lot of different situations and just to maintain it and then bring it to reality like you know i know you're proud of the garden that you created because this, this is like your dream so it's well so it's not just the garden we're we're on nine acres right now trying to restore it the garden is just one part but eventually i would we are working towards restoring this fruit orchard and i'm turning it into an exotic fruit orchard so uh we still have a long ways to go yeah. <laughs> it's amazing what are you gonna plant what's like your most like top five favorite fruits you for sure want to we'll plant? be planting lots of jackfruit and um, keep going <laughs> honestly it's more than five it's, it's like every lot. exotic fruit you can think of we'll be doing kaimitos mango longan rambutan lychee what about meme sapote We'll do mime sapote. We'll do all types of sapotes. It's really, yeah. we're going to be, my goal is to specialize in the exotic fruits, to contribute to the community. That would um, be amazing. Yeah. That's so, so cool. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about, like, your relationship story. I don't know, I don't know your full relationship story. I'd like to get a little bit more details, like, how you guys came to be the way you are. Yeah, so that's a great question. I actually love this question because Christina and I, we always go back and forth on the story, but at the end of the day, it is very insightful and just funny to, to like hear someone's story about how love came because it doesn't always have to fit a certain narrative or a certain image. And when Christina came into my life, I was completely unaware of the vegan lifestyle. I only knew one person who was vegan and he was vegan for about 11 years. And I was just like, man, how could you do this? Like you're just eating just veggies and produce and I was always just messing with them and then Christina comes into my life and she's just like opening me up to so many new possibilities of like really living so that was awesome but to answer your question we met at a social gathering where Christina was designated to prepare food I was chefing at a, a, a gathering let's call it that I was chefing at a house party and um Cash was the only person in the kitchen while everybody was like in the living room, Aww. Yeah. like you know, doing appetizers and things. And he was, I, was, I was in the kitchen trying was, to keep my coolness. Right, on. he was sitting on the counter and just looking at his phone, and I'm sitting here chopping, and I'm like, why is this guy like in here with me? So yeah. I offered him, like, I took a piece of a cherry tomato and I put it in some kale. I was like, do you want kale and some cherry tomatoes to snack on? And he just looked up at me and he was like, <laughs> he didn't even say no. He didn't. There was no word that came out and then he just went back to his phone and i'm sitting there like okay yeah. Un <laughs> you know, unfortunately, like that was that was our first encounter <laughs> unfortunately to my defense i wasn't really passionate about tomatoes never have been <laughs> and kale was just a new oh my God, leafy right? thing that i'm getting introduced to so i was very beginner at understanding this lifestyle but what ended up happening is um we were connected through a similar group of friends in houston and I was very busy at the time running my co-op and, you know, I think I was just finishing my book tour. I was like halfway through it and um, I had just gotten back from Bali and I was going through that really crazy period of my life where my co-op had just been forced to close. 
I was going through every major life crisis I could have possibly going through at one point in time from like losing some of my best friends to people stealing money from me to uh, having so much betrayal going on. It was just like everything came crashing down and the universe was like, I'm just going to steer you this way. You're not going to like it, but I promise things will be okay in the long run. And it's interesting because once you're, you know, really high for a period of time and everybody wants to be your friend, the second you kind of lose it all, everybody starts walking out of your life. And I felt really alone at the time, but I just remember one day getting a random text from Cash and he's like, hey, I hear you're having a really hard time. Sounds like you could use a real friend in your life, like someone who stays. Yeah, because that's actually really sad that that has been your experience. Like when shit hits the fan, um, all your friends are going to leave, you know, because that's not really everyone's experience, but that was your experience. So when you, you know, Cash comes into the picture, like what a meaningful, important. Yes, yeah. and it, it showed me that those weren't real friends, right? And, um, and I was like, I, I was so numb at the time. I think I was just going through so much. I was like, oh, thank you. That's sweet, you know? Uh, and then he's like, what are you doing tomorrow? I was like, going to yoga, right? I was like, I had just gotten back in town from Bali. And next thing I know, he shows up at my yoga class. Yeah. <laughs> Never taken a yoga class before. To Walks speak in, on that. To speak all on that. like cool. Got the swag movement going on. He's like, I'm going to go to yoga. <laughs> the yoga studio had like this new member or like visitor membership, like trial for 30 days or something. So I was like, okay, you know, opportunity to try yoga. Christina, I mean, that's not a bad situation to be in. <laughs> open minded. Yeah, I'm open minded. <laughs> we're shaking the whole time. He was class, shaking. And uh, I just remember it was our first time ever hanging out and we took a picture after and I remember he told me, he's like, I just got my first L. And I was like, what does that mean? He goes, my first loss. And I was like, oh, okay. As yeah. in like you could have won or something? <laughs> I was saying that as in like I had expectations to like really thrive through this yoga class because I'm like weightlifting, playing basketball, doing all this stuff. I'm saying I'm in fit, you know, coming yeah. from this place of ego. And then all these other people in the class are just going through these poses and just <laughs> exceeding expectations and my arms were just struggling it was a heated room so it's just something i wasn't used to but uh i'm glad i had the opportunity to like you know experience that with christina and we laughed about it and we still laugh about it today so and it's a vulnerable moment like oh, you're choosing sure. to be like you know i'm gonna pursue this in an uncharted territory yeah. expecting it to go well and then it doesn't <laughs> yeah you get humbled real quick but totally. in a way we were both in a very raw position and like i was just stripped raw from so much going on in my life and you're like all right i should have on this moment Naturally, we ended up being yoga buddies, and we would do yoga three, four times a week, sometimes every day, and we were friends for a year and a half before um, we decided to start dating. Yeah. So That's pretty much the foundation of how we even had the opportunity to see, like, is this something more than what we're doing currently? Because there was a lot of healing in that year and a half that needed to take place because Christina was going through moments of, like, self-awareness of understanding how to set healthy boundaries and I was trying to highlight that for her to let her know like hey it's okay to be stern with someone who's overstepping the respect that you are deserved and should be given and so I was really trying to communicate that on her behalf to give her that strength and say like hey it is okay to be stern with your beliefs and your truths of how you should be respected and handled and I f feel like when she realized my intentions was to help her heal there was a moment where it was like this could be more and we just kept hanging out and this lo and behold i'm the one who suggested <laughs> that we should date because it felt like we were dating and we were hanging out every day yeah. and he you know became my closest friend in houston and i was like uh, i think it would be wonderful if we dated we're very well balanced this isn't a lustful thing this is this is a core rooted friendship and he said no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, man. <laughs> he was like, Cash is very emotionally... This uh, he, emotional he, 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 He's yeah. got some serious emotional intelligence. And I just remember he looked at me and he was like, 
in order for you and me to meet, you have to have more space in your life for me. And I was like, what are you talking about? I give you all my time. I actually time. remember that. I remember yeah. you texting me about this. And I was like, Ellen. Um, oh yeah, God. I remember it. And, and I'm like, this. I'm like, actually, that's amazing. Like, that, like to speak up like that. I remember yeah. feeling he, that way. Exactly. He was like, you need to get rid of this person, this person, this person. He like listed them out. And he's like, all these people are taking advantage of you and you're allowing it. They're energy vampires. He's like, I don't understand how you're ever going to have emotional space for me if you're like letting this suck you dry. Mm. And so. Yeah, it was, to me, I just saw it as it, un, it was unfortunate because I was like, someone as beautiful as her inside and out has all this potential to share with the world, yet there's people who just take advantage of her because like Christina's a very nice, kind-hearted person. And I was just, I saw it as if they're constantly putting and projecting damaging energy onto her and she has to express that with me constantly we'll never have room to talk about us it would just be how do we heal these broken friendships that aren't really true friendships and i was just really trying to like make her see like no no, no we have to protect our space that we're trying to build because that's where growth in our relationship growth and potential ideas of like family and all these things it was a sacred space for me, and I just wanted to like highlight and say like this is important to me. Yeah. yeah, that's actually like really healthy, and maybe partly because you didn't have many experiences with friends that were really true friends to express honesty and openness, and have a, like maybe emo- like a healthy emotional balance and intellect. Like the fact that you like brought that to light was probably like really helpful for not only your relationship but like for your own life. Yes, it was. So I did it. And I, I remember texting you throughout this whole time because it was really challenging because I felt like I, I don't know, it was very hard for me to learn what boundaries were. Mm-hmm. That's been one of my greatest life's struggles and journeys has been understanding proper boundaries with people. And so as soon as I, I don't want to say got rid of these people in my life, but I knew where to place them so that I felt safe and protected and I wasn't allowing them to hurt me. You know, two, three months passed, and I came back to Cash. I was like, all right, I've done this. I feel like I'm ready. Let's give this a try. Yeah. And, and again, he was like, no, <laughs> you're not ready yet. And I don't, what was the second reason why? I forget. It was, it was a new scenario that came back up, and it was heavier. And I don't know if you want to elaborate about it. We'll give the general because I'm trying to remember what it was. Actually. I think at this point in time, there was, there were, I think this was like the onslaught of like the fallout from the co-op where... Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Basically, some other things had, had reared and he asked me again, I need to do X, Y, Z and this. And he's well, like, you and, need to get... Well, well, and I also want to say this because when a business is starting to close, it's not just like, okay, today's the end and then we move on. So when she says like she went to Bali and to like heal and stuff... Uh, the, the business of that she had at that magnitude, the scale of it, like it was some time before it fully closed. And so as she's healing through setting healthy boundaries from just friends, here comes the business bringing something new on the table, like, okay, deal with this now. And it was just as big as like some of these damaged relationships with friends. And we had to work through that. And there's like some drama. And I, I think more than anything, Cash really wanted me to be able to move through these things without allowing them to totally just destroy me so that he always had to be the one picking me back up. That's so healthy and, he, and like rare, yes. I think. And it, it was very difficult for both of us because I was working through my abandonment issues. I was like, all right, here he is preparing to like just drop She's me thinking, total, I don't want her. And right? Stuff. And <laughs> so I was like, but, I, but in my heart I knew I had to do it. So, you know, I mustered everything I had and I pulled myself together and um I think her like one of the hurricanes hit right after that and then I got really into like community work and helping Houston recover from a hurricane and then it was Harvey yeah a yeah. couple months after that I just remember we came back to the table <laughs> and I asked one final time I was like are like I I don't understand I was like you're spending all this time with me it's like we're technically dating but you won't you won't date me. And, you know, I was like, this is it. And then finally, again, he was like, no. He's like, but this time, but this it was time, about It was him. about me. Because, <laughs> but this is good. I think that a lot of people need to hear, hear this. That this time it was about me because it was more so like you've done your work and I've assisted you and guiding you through that. But I had came out of a relationship like a year before knowing Christina or 
I, I'm not really sure how the time matches up, but I know I had I didn't finish healing because I found out that the person I was pursuing and dating, we've invested all this time and energy. I found out through social media that she was messing around with someone else. So like it kind of mm. caught me off guard and by surprise. Yeah. So Christina's asking me to trust her, and is, I'm wanting to, but emotionally I wasn't ready to trust anyone. Right. Um, and that's why the third time was no, but we still overcame these hurdles and I don't know how we have so much patience with each other <laughs> to like go through these things, but look how far it's gotten us now. Yes. Um, Cash and I have very solid communication right now, even with scenarios that might for most people be considered extremely painful. I think it's just his energy. He carries everything with such balance and calmness. That's like right. we can talk about <laughs> difficult things and just be very practical about it and it's um it's very nice and that's actually why like the main reason why i want to have this conversation with not just you but you as well on the topic of cancel culture like because there's like different ways to handle and receive energies and what you're going through and so the ways that like you guys have essentially helped each other through your hardships and how you've helped her through every time you've been quote unquote called out canceled and just the different perspectives you can have within an experience. I think totally. it's like pivotal and it's yeah. going to be such a great conversation to totally. segue into. So we should just get into that then. Yeah. And thanks for sharing your story. I think that, that is like a beautiful story, honestly, and like really rare. Because a lot of times I think relationships like kind of feed off of your suffering. Like you find each other because you're suffering. This can be like really like partner um, romantic relationships or even friendship relationships where you might be struggling with something and then you find yourselves feeding off each other through your negativity and the the hardships and it's good to be like there for each other but yeah. there's a difference between helping lift one another up as opposed to just like bringing each other totally. down yeah. right and i think like something a lot of people have learned is that if your friendship if you find yourself in your friendship always talking negatively made about your own experiences but especially if it's about others then you realize that like you're getting this like false sense of like a security and a friendship like yeah. you think you're having a genuine friendship when like really reassurance false reassurance yeah sense, like yeah. you think and then the moment that something happens like any with any kind of effect like it all falls apart because there was no genuine foundation of mm. a friendship because you only just fed off each other because if you think it's like a false connection mm -hmm. when you're yeah. like talking about other people and yeah. just like yeah anyways it's it's true i think People enter into relationships, any kind of relationship, friendships, romantic relationships, <clears throat> thinking this other person is going to save me or they will be there for me and I will use them as a crutch in a way. Very few people enter into a relationship thinking, I need to be 100 so I can give this person yeah. 100. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and, and then, that is and then when you are going through something, you already have that foundation. Totally. So amazing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's su such a good topic. I mean, that could be like a whole episode. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, let's talk about cancel culture. This is what we're really here for. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready. And we're I'm ready. ready for this. <laughs> and before it. we like get into the nitty gritty, I kind of wanted to like talk about what cancel culture really means because I think there's like multiple ways to describe it and define it, and people might be looking at it in different ways. Because like if we're gonna get into this and, and talk about all the ways that you've been canceled and how many times you've been called out for something, because honestly it astonishes me. Like I <laughs> like I look at you, Andrew and I talked about this. He's like literally I don't understand. Like all she ever shares is positivity, love, and kindness. Like how how is she getting torn down yeah. so much? Like for the most like random things it feels. That's how it feels and just. It's almost, ha it's happened so much that it almost feels like comical at this point. Like, huh? Yeah. Again? Like, we're still doing this? We're still doing this. Like, yeah. So I think that if we can like define it on what it really means to like you guys and me, like that'll help shape the conversation good and then we can like get into like what you're really, um, what you've gone through. <laughs> so for me, I kind of wrote down what I think like, I think cancel culture, which is, I think can also be called call out culture. Call out, cult call out culture, I think is a better way to truly define it because most of the time when someone's like canceled, they, their whole life isn't actually destroyed. It does happen, but I think most of the time they can still continue on with their career. But generally it's call out culture where you might get this mob mentality for a period of time, either short mm -hmm. or long, and then eventually everyone moves on and picks on someone else. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. kind of what it feels like. So call out culture, I think is like more accurate 
of a term, but it's a form of boycotting or shunning an individual, often a celebrity, for doing something questionable or controversial or something that some people consider downright wrong enough to where they think that their business should be destroyed. That they often and they often encourage others to not support the person, their product or company, um, socially and financially. Like that's like it's kind of like their punishment for yeah. what they did wrong, you know. Yeah. Um, and there's a collective attempt to harm the reputation, the person's reputation and social presence, and sometimes even the livelihood for violating a particular ideological standard. And the notion of canceling someone has been around for like a long time, but it seems lately social media has bolstered this like mob mentality of like an unaccountable mob rule that punishes the said like guilty person for like the moral violations. Yeah. But what do you guys say? Like, do you think that's accurate description or how else would it's you describe super it? Super accurate. It's it's one hundred percent accurate. Spot on. <clears throat> well, I wrote it down, so that's yeah, why yeah. I said I mean, it so perfect. <laughs> I, so just from what I've seen from. A lot of just either athletes, celebrities. I mean, there's current people who's getting canceled right now. So there's, like you said, there's something questionable about your comments, action, choices. Uh, sometimes it could even lead to beliefs. And I feel like media and how social media is currently, if if the call out culture gets, and I actually like how you position yeah. that, if the call out culture gets enough momentum behind these accusations no one else needs to validate whether it's true or not yes it's just like this compounding effect kind of like a snowball effect come down a mountain just builds 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 and no one stops to say how do we get here what is it about this person that we just are going to jump to conclusions and where's your sources Yes. Is, this is this even true? Yeah, because if enough people say it, then it must be true. Yeah. It's kind of like the, that's the general rule. That's unfortunate. That unfortunate. Because there's a lot of good people out here that have the genuine hearts and for the world and just people in general. And we're so quick to write someone off because of assumptions. Yes. Yeah. So I'll build on that. Um, I've been, I've been, uh, I don't want to say accused, but I've been called out. <laughs> for some really crazy and hurtful things. Um, some questionable, absolutely. But I, I will say that every single one of these ripple effects started with one person who put out either a YouTube video or a post just totally bashing or shaming me. And it just started with one person's opinion. And then it always amazes me how so many people see it assume it to be true, ride the train, and before you know it, the next morning, there's 60 YouTube videos about you, all like building upon each other's assumptions. Yeah. No one's even spoken to you. No one even knows the truth. And then- that's not it, interesting. It, no, it's <sighs> not, but it's, um, it's, it's how you destroy someone's integrity. Like not, it's, it's how you destroy someone, essentially, but it's also, it gives other people attention. It gives them importance to a certain degree, but it, it's just interesting because that's how every single one of these situations has started. For that's me. really interesting because I've had a couple times where there's been like a call out for me as well, and it, I don't know. Actually, I guess it did kind of no a couple times. One of the times it might have been like a post I did that was like not well liked by a lot of people, and then and then pe then people made videos about it type of thing. Yeah. Um, and, and it kind of just got momentum based on something I've said or done, and then another time might just just came out of nowhere out of it you know things right. like that it can just come out of nowhere or it could be something that you've said and has like a big reaction because it make i actually was going to ask you i was like once we get into this i mean there's more i wanted to say before we got into this but i was thinking what exactly is like the first time that you've been so-called called out and i may be wrong but the first time i remember about you would be like um when you painted your whole body black did like an artistic photo shoot and did this like body art all over like colorful body art and so that was like maybe a reaction from like a post you did Right. Actually, the first time I experienced cancel culture was 2014-ish, uh, or like, and it was for it was for staying silent on something mm, mm -hmm. that I had no business in, mm -hmm. really, um, and that I not I did not want to take business in, and somebody got upset with me for not standing up for them, and mm. I mean, they came after me hard for it, and that was the first time. Then I would say the second time was the body paint was incident. Was the body paint one. But what was interesting about it is it was a Puerto Rican artist, and we were in a studio with multiple cultures and diversities of mm -hmm. people. Like, it wasn't just like I went and painted myself, 
you know, the Garden I'll of Eden. I'll just go Eden, do this by myself. It, like the yeah. entire, the entire, when he asked me if I wanted to be body painted, it was a very intentional ask. It was, I want to paint the Garden of Eden on you with all your fruits and vegetables because yeah. it's inspiring and you do raw food. And my skin is olive. And when he painted on me, he's like, I can't, it, you're, the fruits and vegetables don't pop on your skin. So I have to like give, I'm, I'm going to paint you black first and I'm going to paint everything over it. And I didn't even, I didn't think anything of it. Of course right? you didn't. If, you mean, th- if you did yeah. think any, if there was any kind of uh, like um, thought, you probably wouldn't have done it. Right. And I think that that goes back to what you're saying. Like people assume and then um, assign ill intent before getting facts. And I think yeah. some people don't think the ill intent, whether it is ill intent or not matters. Some people think even if your intent was not ill, yeah. it still um, requires um, a response like that. Right. Whereas and I disagree with that. Completely. Even though it was not intended to be harmful. It was intended to be art. Um, I took all the posts down immediately and I issued a public apology. That I was, remember that. Right? Yeah. And I, I was like, I, I honestly, it was my first wake up call to many different things. Uh, I issued a public apology. Some people accepted it. Some people didn't. In my heart, I clearly meant no malintent because if I did, I mean, like my captions around it were like, Garden of Eden, painted on my body. Yeah. Like... It what? just, it, it call me, call me naive at the time, right? We can assume that that's accurate. But um, what's interesting is that, well, in my future day, in the future, it's almost as if that public apology didn't matter because some people hung on to it so tight that it like resurfaced multiple times after that. Um, well, so what you're saying is 100% accurate. Like people are still trying to latch on to that narrative and controversy brings attention. Um, people have their own motives on why they want to stir things up. And when it comes to blackface, I think a lot of the noise, like people weren't looking at, like you said, the intentions of it. The intentions was to make a mockery of a specific race of people. And you, to me, context matters in everything. You need the totality of how we got to this point to say this is this or this is not this. And People just wanted to run with their narratives, Mm. which was unfortunate because I'm like, as an artist, you understand how to work with colors. Sometimes contrast is a thing that is necessary to hit your artistic vision, but people want to keep things very surface level just to create more divide and tension. Um, And with the irony in all of this is that no one wanted to talk to me about how I felt about it because it would kill the noise because I would just literally call them out right. about it because there's documentaries where you can look and see the intentions of blackface of why, yeah. why they wanted to make people appear to be rapists and vigilantes, criminals and right. all these things. And you're going to sit up here and try to tell me this fruit that's on <laughs> a black foundation <laughs> is promoting like violence is promoting like comedy of a skin tone. So were you guys already together when you did this? Just friends. We weren't together when it happened. We were we were just friends. Um, and did people know like like that you guys were friends? Because that would have been that would have been much more nuanced. Did. I think I think that would have been much more nuanced if people could be like, well, what what do you think about this? And just kind of hear different perspectives from it because they're really that's the thing is like so maybe someone else is going to disagree and say that like they're they feel triggered or hurt by even seeing it even if there wasn't yeah. any ill intent but like where's the nuance and just hearing the differences in perspectives I think is crucial. A perspective that's not being heard I think most people don't realize that a lot of people don't know about African American history. A lot of people don't know about the mockery of blackface because you know, when the whole George Floyd situation happened, I'm just thinking, I'm just a local guy in Houston, but I have people from Germany and Italy and Moscow messaging me, was slavery in America? My mm. kids are concerned about coming to America. Like, they're not, their skin tone is closer to yours. Is it safe for us to come? So there was this whole assumption, like, everybody knows what blackface is. Mm-hmm. Now, I've seen pictures of people go to, like, frat parties, and it's Halloween, and they're, like, dressed up in a it's brown skin tone because it's it's costume night and I was like yeah that's intent to make comedy out of a, a race of people um, which is polar opposite of what she was trying to create from a visual artistic style but there's so many people in the world want to just keep this tension because it's noise and it's loud but 
the assumption to me is that you, even though we're in America, like people around the world, we all don't know about, you know, the history and the the pain points of this African American culture, and so I just feel like the education needed to be highlighted more and giving people the fair chance to like learn from their mistakes, um, whether it's ill intention or not. Um, intentional at all like if we're going to unite in any form or way we have to educate reform and move forward with purpose and having a forgiving heart in doing so right 100 percent and and i think the approach to how someone would want if someone felt compelled to respond to like your choice to do that like it could have been drastically different i'm I'm sure there were some very like kind people responding i don't know let me know but like responding to like hey i'm not sure this was the best idea have you considered this have you thought about how this some people would perceive this type of thing as opposed to like wow you're a horrible person i can't believe you would do at that at the time no because the, the current climate back climate then was so different the current social climate was so different hmm. back six seven eight years ago it was what 10 i don't know 10 six eight, eight years ago whenever it happened it wasn't it's not like today where everything is cancel culture everybody's trying to shame somebody Everybody's so how trying. was it different like to, for that experience for you then? Do you think compared to what it would be um, if it happened like from, now? From what I remember in the comment section, there was a lot of support and then there was there was a lot of hate, but it the hate is always louder than mm. those who offer support. And it pe- seems pe- like there's more people and really it's just a small percentage. It, and yes, and they just but, seem they're just they seems like so much because they're just loud and they, they rally the haters. And then what ends up happening is you end up having to deal with that, <laughs> that lineup of, of, of. So how so how does that work in your relationship through all the things you've gone through whenever you are going through like a mentally challenging time, like socially online? How is your support, your mindset, your intellect, emotional intellect, like handled through your experiences? Because I know I have my experience whenever I'm going through something like my husband. Mm. Mike is giving me the answer that I'm like, I don't really want to hear that from you right now, even though I actually need to hear that from him right now. (laughs) I think uh, so in these particular moments where it was a lot of controversy around race, racial tension, um, I've always tried to be a guide for Christina just because at the time when things were coming together with you had like police brutality and Black Lives Matter and all these things that were just coming up and being present. Are we talking about eight years ago or are we talking about today? I, I think, don't know. I, I guess think, just any time. I anytime. think we're talking okay. about the collection of how everything has come together and how I how I've managed to like support you through these difficult yeah. times okay that's what it sounds like to me and I was just going to say that it feels like when Christina you were in the I mean because even the the whole veg news situation kind of resurfaced some things for us and I was there being more of like a guide and assistant and giving feedback on like how things may be perceived and well I, I just want to say this I'm not totally helpless you guys <laughs> oh I did not uh, mean no, it like that. I, no I I'm I am a brave enough and strong enough female to to apologize and to stand up when I've done something wrong and I feel like I've done that in every case scenario where I felt like even I, I could be questioned and I've done that um, now I think that when it goes beyond that and people perpetuate the hate towards you even after that and they continue to try and destroy you or stalk you uh, or like do many more awful things that I won't mention here and it becomes more of a vindictive uh, I, it's, it's, I think at that point you realize after having dealt with so many of these people because I've been online since 2012 and I ran my co-op years before that since 2007 you realize that there's a there's a difference between jealousy and envy and this was really hard for me to understand at first because like you can meet some females and they might be like oh I really like your hair and your body and it turns into like a weird jealousy thing or something but then envy is totally different it can be that somebody sees you and they see your joy and because they're so unhappy they can't they can't even stand looking at you because they're so miserable themselves and so it like sparks something within them where it's like either they're benefiting off of it by gaining attention or money uh, or something off of it, but it, in a very scary way, brings them validation and happiness to bring you misery. Um, and so when you start exploring this concept of that, I'm like, okay, so I can understand 
uh, where people's trigger points are. And you don't just look at things on the surface anymore. You actually like, start looking at the people, uh, looking at the people who are saying the things and you, you move beyond it. Um, and I just wanted to say that because it's not always black or white with, with no. public no. disgrace and public shaming. It's not no always, way. oh, she's questionable. I'm going to call her out. Oftentimes, if you look more into it, if you look at like the person who started something, it's, it's, it's a, it's a delicate situation. Oh no, for sure. Yeah. There's actually this woman, what's her name? Lily Singh. Do you guys know her yeah, on YouTube? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She did this She's wonderful cool. yeah, Instagram yeah. video one time where she was like, talk, how to, like, she was saying something about like responding to hater comments and, mm -hmm. and she's like, or negative comments. And she's like, look, the reality is, is that you will never be criticized by someone who is doing more than you. And I was like, whoa. It's deep. It's so yeah. true because yeah. literally, like, if you're like working on your own life, you're building your success both internally and outwardly, whether that's, you know, emotionally or just like your success, that whatever success looks like for you, yeah. you're so busy, you don't have time to criticize others. Like, yeah. literally, you're doing your own thing. You're yeah. literally, you're, you're like, you know, you're like, ah, I disagree with what this person's doing. I disagree with the way that they're doing that. I'm going to do it my own way. Yeah. I'm going to put out into the world what what I believe, mm -hmm. what I believe is going to help the world or what I believe is going to make a positive impact instead of focusing on someone else's choices and how they're living and using their name to, you know, to, to get, um, attraction, at, get, get yeah, more attention, attention, all yeah. in the name of, well, I just have to, I have to, um, help those help people who follow them know how wrong they are when really you don't have to do that. You could go and just say with your own, um, s possibility for success to share what you really believe in and do your own thing. I honestly, I, I think that that statement could not be more true. I literally have zero, um, <laughs> I, I can't even comprehend a bone in my body wanting to comment comment something negative on someone else's post that I disagree with. Like I'll read it and go, "Huh, I disagree with that." Like the 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 thought of, like I just don't have time for that. Yeah. <laughs> Nor do I want to put energy into that. Yeah, the slander is unnecessary. Yeah. Yes. And there's a hold on. There is a difference though. I will say between like starting a conversation. For right? sure. Totally. Like my husband enjoys that. He likes like, oh, let's start a conversation here, which doesn't always go well <laughs> online. But but I I don't. I don't like to do that online personally. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to be like on a screen any more than I already am for work. And I just find in-person conversations so much better, especially when it's about something you disagree with because you can read body language and tone of voice. And I just think it goes so much better. Yeah. But there is a difference between like, I'm just going to type something really nasty versus like, hey, have you thought about this? Or I, I think I disagree. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I just want to clarify that. And I, di I, when I was bringing up like, okay, Cash, what's your role in how yeah. you guys support each other? In no way am I am I thinking, oh, you're so helpless. Not at all. I'm like seeing myself in you because when I go through something online that's like emotionally trying, um, because it is harder than you would think, you know, like when there's like hundreds of thousands of people that are just like all of a sudden thinking about this this thing about you. Because I, I personally, I just really don't like to be misunderstood. Mm -hmm. I, I really would rather just like, let's just explain and have an open hearted conversation like one on one as yeah. opposed to just Absolutely. like the assumptions are just really, really hard for me. It is really hard for me internally to just accept that I am going to be misunderstood by a lot of people. Yeah. You know, most people are not like that, though. Most people are, gonna, are who are like watching your stuff are like just love you and they just love everything you're sharing. And that is just so beautiful because it's easy to like not see it that way. Mm -hmm. you know the the amount of like people who are who don't like you or whatever like it's such a small percentage but but it is easy because like you said they're, they're just louder it's easy to make it seem bigger than it is and there are times when I'm like trying in my I have the trying mental challenges in my in my life and my husband's like Ellen get over it <laughs> he's yeah. like who cares yeah. what other people think and I'm like how could you say that? Because it's like, it's so right, but it's so annoying to yeah. hear it from someone else. So that's just my own personal experience because, I mean, he might, he could say it in like, you know, a nicer way, a little bit gentler, but you know, sometimes I just need to hear it. Like, you know what? Look at your life. Like, stop in your head with the online games, people you're never going to meet in your life. Mm -hmm. Like, look at your actual life. And I'm like, yeah, I really need to hear that right now. Like, things like that really help me move forward to not like dwell on like, hard moments and also yeah. to just accept like you know what some people are going to disagree with me yep. certain things where i'm really not being misunderstood on but they're going to dis they're going to disagree with me and while i would rather have like a uh, in-person conversation to like find see where we find um common ground because yep. you can almost always find common ground when you have a conversation yeah, but that's I, what i would rather but just not going to go like that with like the types of things that we do for yeah. our work i i think that 
people have forgotten the humanity in others, especially yeah. online. Totally. Right? So I love, love what you're saying, you know, like this essence of bringing love to the table, even if you don't have something in common with somebody and talking it out and just listening, yeah. understanding where they're coming from. You don't have to believe the same things, but like I can love you and disagree and I can listen. It's like, this is how you bring love to the table. It's a skill. It takes it's a, it's a yeah. skill to practice. Yeah. But we're in a society right now where it's like, you can only follow people that have similar, like it, God forbid I follow somebody on Instagram who's not vegan. I've actually had people message me and say, oh, yeah. I can't believe you follow this person. Don't you see what they just did? Unfollow them oh, immediately. I get that all the time. And I, all the time. I'm, I, I just... I don't even pay attention to it anymore because I'm. Like, I don't like that because I I don't want to live in an echo chamber. I like to hear d- dissenting opinions yeah. on all different kinds of things because it helps me to either solidify what I believe even further and stronger because mm-hmm. I know what the other side is is what their views are, yep. or it helps me to possibly shift my mind, or even if I don't shift my mind, to just see where they're coming from and try to relate because I don't think it's helpful to assign ill intent. Exactly, and that's something you were talking about. Yeah, if you want to expand more. Yeah, well. And I definitely like what you're saying as well. We It's so easy to get trapped into curating your social media platform to all of your likes. Um, and I don't mean likes as in what you're liking pictures, but your interests. Because as soon as there's opposition in your viewpoint, there's like, there's a breach. 100%. And you're uncomfortable now because it doesn't follow the, the flow of your timeline. And it's like, okay, Report, unfollow, block, don't want to see that. And what that does is reinforce beliefs that this is the right way without having a conversation with the other side or seeing what the other side is doing to, like you said, to get the common ground. If we have tunnel vision in only one way, we're so far from the middle ground that we're unaware of what middle ground is. And I think social media allows us to be in this false world and forgetting like, yeah, it's okay to exist with someone who doesn't have the same views as you. But if you have a peaceful conversation, a conversation with compassion to understand and hear them out, we actually can grow through this and have maturity and development. Um, and that's something that's missing a lot because it's uncomfortable, but that's where the growth is. Like, mm. that's really where the growth is. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, there, sure, there's going to be some people who do have an ill intent, but to assign everyone as to have ill intentions if you disagree with them, I think is a huge disservice to like our mental growth yeah. and understanding because I think mass majority do not have ill intent yeah. in one, what, they're, what they believe. One thing that I was always taught is to try to give, try to observe positive intentions before I jump to the uh, conclusion of it being ill intentions. And so I was taught that, okay, if this happens, like if someone comes in one day and they're frustrated and then they just happen to outlash something at me, I need to ask myself, maybe they're having a bad day. Maybe it's not me. But if this becomes a repeated behavior, and this is me having positive intentions, like saying like there's outside factors that could be affecting them that's causing them to like lash out at me. But if this becomes a repeated behavior, now you have a historical record of like, hey, you need to address this the way you're like presenting yourself online with social media or in the workplace or in your relationship is it creates this opportunity for positive feedback or specific feedback Mm -hmm. where people can just say, and that's kind of like something we did in our relationship where it's like, I appreciate you for taking the time out and seeing something that I was unaware of. Because when we get in these like ruts of frustration or misery, We don't really see it. Someone has to point it out to us. Mm, Um, 100%. And a lot of people in life really need that person in their life because if no one points it out, you're just in this cycle. You're in this cycle. And you you can see that that it's apparent in a lot of people's lives because the way how social media is so divisive. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's why ill intention, I like that you brought that back up again. We really need to not jump so quick to assuming that the intention was ill and try to understand each other with compassion. And I think that even goes as far as to the people who are commenting on your page because yeah. I'm uh, there's a couple things here like when people are consistently commenting like nasty things to you or making videos that are just outright nasty. Not like a not like a, I'm not talking to someone that's like, "Hmm, I disagree with this person and I'm going to say why." 
when it's just like a p- intentional nastiness like there's literally no positive uh, yeah. thing meant from videos it videos where they like zoom in on your face and picking like, apart your face and, right and just yeah. like awful tight it's it's a basically a total clickbait for money and attention That's yeah I, and i mean for those types you just know i honestly just feel bad for them like that they're spending their energy looking at my face that close that they're literally spending their precious energy and their time in that way and that's not to say like i do believe that most that these people are generally believe in their cause but i just don't think it's a helpful nor beneficial uh, way to enhance their life or anyone's life but aside from from that we can even take like what you were talking about people in person if they might say uh, lashing out on you and you think, well, maybe they had a hard day. I think you can also look at that in the comments as well. You know, sometimes yeah. people might be responding to something really harshly and you're like, whoa, where did that come from? Or like accuse you of something or name call and stuff. And it's easy to just um, just be like, to just take it internally instead of realizing like, hey, maybe they were having a hard day. Because there are times, most of the time I don't give it energy or respond or I, it depends on the type of message. If it's like a purposeful, um, no beneficial, nasty comment intentionally, um, I, I block, move on type of thing. Yeah. You know, better for both of us to not be spending energy in that way. But if sometimes, every once in a while, I'm like, you know what, I have the time right now. I might send a message back. And there's been a couple of times where I'll send a message back and realize the person responds with like calmness and apologetic like uh, energy. Yeah. Like, oh man, I'm sorry, I've just had a hard day. Like literally that's happened multiple times. Yeah. And you realize there's just so much more nuance to the discussion than just black everything being so black and white yeah the i like to say the dynamic range of the scope of conversations like what you're describing is very like pivotal and critical because like you said it could either go left where it's just completely vulgar and uncalled for commentary in in the comment section or it could be like hey let's i'm, I'm gonna give you a chance to like clear this up i'm gonna hear you out and let's see if we can connect and move forward and still be able to like coexist. And you really have to have the mindset to differentiate between the two because you like, you don't want to take it internally and then it's just sitting with you the rest of the day. They probably moved on. They're at a happy hour. Like, you know, don't let that energy just weigh totally, on you. Totally. Let, let it go. Move forward. Clear your head. You know, you have a lot more people, especially like you and Christina, you have a lot of people that appreciate the work that you do. Um, and they're finding you as leaders in this community to really like hone your voice and stand true to what your calling is, you know? Yeah. And what kind of world are we even living in right now? Having this conversation about people commenting things like I I didn't grow up, obviously (laughs) neither of us grew up in that world, like before smartphones, I can't even imagine what kids are going through, uh, experiencing like social media at such a young age. I mean, honestly with like your developing brain and everything, it's just insane like just yeah. because really like we have got to a place where people say things they would never say in real life and that's something that's like so pivotal to realize um and take 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 at heart you know when you're yeah. getting any kind of message because whether they've had a hard day or it's just because there's that um a nominity from uh, you no know, not showing your face like things that you know people say really like if you if you came up to me in real life like what would you really say yeah we'd likely have a really polite conversation and enjoy ourselves together I've, yeah. I've had that happen so many times where I've I mean even back when I was running the co-op I would have people come and buy a, a box of produce for me and they would tell me how much I've changed their lives. They'd love me. They'd hug me. They'd take a picture with me. One week later, it turned into like a trash. I I met Christina and she was so awful and so rude and she only gave me a hug, but she didn't ask me about my life story and this and this. And like, it's almost as if you can't, there's, you can't be perfect. You can't do everything right. You can only meet people where they're at. And you're right. I think that we are living in a society now where it's like social media has uh, exacerbated, um, this idea of I must be loved and accepted by everybody and people are so deathly afraid of the judgments and criticisms of others which is why we're now having this conversation it's like what's happening in the comments section but the truth is is does it matter does it serve my purpose am I able to still move forward and share what I feel will make this world be a better place and what will actually make a difference. Yeah, and this right? applies to not even just online social media, but in real life that you will never, ever get everyone to see things the way, that get everyone to see 
things mm-hmm. the way that you see life. You know, not right. everyone is going to understand you. You're going to have people who see you in a way that you don't like. You're not yeah. going to get everyone ever to yeah. just like you. It's just impossible. Yeah. Unless you're superhuman and you're just one of those people that everybody <laughs> likes, which does happen. Andrew's actually kind of like that. Yeah. Like in person. <laughs> if you're that person, I need the secret. <laughs> <laughs> need yeah, like you just never, like we're all, we're all going to think, see things in a different way. It's like a really good thing to understand that like no matter how something seems so common sense to you, there's going to be yeah. at least some people that just don't see it the way that you yeah. do and that's okay. Yep. You have to be okay with that and knowing that one thing that i found liberating for me is being okay with that but also that allows my tribe of people who identify with me like they see me for who i am and they can come find me because if i'm like playing the fence of trying to cater to too many different social groups or just to appease people um you get lost in finding your identity Mm-hmm. And your truth is really going to help you find like your niche, your community, people that help you thrive and feel uplifted to go out in the world and like have a positive uh, cause in, in society. So it's highly important to me. Totally. Yeah. I mean, we could go on and on about this topic, but let's yeah. get into a little bit of like another specific of, you know, the call out culture type of thing that you've gone through. And let's just like dive into it a little bit more. Yeah. Where shall we start? <laughs> um, I think uh, if you want to pick back, pick up with the veg news. Let's just and, hit and, veg and news straight I think on. You, let's do this. I, let's, I but think, before you do that, I think you should also clarify like how that situation even came about because you know you I know because I'm with you like nothing happened that right. you did. It, it, it appeared one morning and everybody had whiplash. Whoa, what did she do? Um, so. Essentially, what happened, and I think it turned into this whole social media storm, was uh, Veg News runs these influencer awards every year, right? And they pick a bunch of influencers or creators in every category, and they nominate them so that they will share their stuff on social media. It helps their platform to grow, and it also honors vegan creators. Every single year I'm nominated, I've never had any complaints up until this year, which the... The cultural climate in January, February was all about calling everybody out on what they'd been doing wrong. And it's just, it was all about canceling people in January, February, March, even. And I just remember one really late night or morning, I was scrolling on Instagram and Veg News had just posted uh, Thank you to everybody who spoke up. We are removing Fully Raw Christina from the ballot for behaviors of discrimination racism, uh, neo-Nazism, and anti-Semitic beliefs, and we're also removing this other person who has been accused of, what, what was it, like pedophilia and sexual abuse of like children or something. I don't even women. Lump, but lumping you in together with Yeah, that. and they threw me under the bus well, with him. I, I think something that's really important, it wasn't, it, it was they, yes, the organization, but I think what people need to realize, it only took one person to make that call. 100%. Well, and it started with one person who convinced 40 people to complain about me. And instead of Veg News reaching out to me and asking me, after a decade of having a strong relationship with them, uh, is this true, Christina? Can you confirm that all of this is... No, instead, they were so afraid of being canceled themselves Mm -hmm. that they believed these 40 complaints or whatever of people who had literally aimed me (laughs) as a target and had... How do you say this? They selected me out, basically. Um, And it started with one woman's YouTube video followed by another woman's assumption turned into this ripple effect, and they wanted me dismantled. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't for something that I had done even this year, last year, the year before that. It was things that were done six, eight years ago, and it was an accumulation of everything that could have been considered... A, a wrongdoing right. in my yeah. entire when, online when career. When it's really just assumption, not understanding intent, right. all yeah. that. And I think you could speak to a greater, most important thing with this, this whole conversation is that it's not that the people at Veg News were like, oh gosh, we really don't want to work with Christina because she really is this way. No, they were just afraid of being canceled exactly. themselves. Yep. Which exactly. speaks to something. Oh my gosh. Oh, well, yeah. here's the, the worst part about all of this is that I woke up to a social media storm receiving an incredible amount of 
awful hatred the next morning. And I'm like... Well, it's because they're like a news outlet. They're so they're going to be saying, this so, is what you're like. This exactly. is not just some random person in the comments. Pe- the, exactly. People believe them to be credible. Mm-hmm. Veg News, their magazine is in every Whole Foods across the country. And here they are. They've just called Fully Raw Christina. Not only a racist, but a neo-Nazi. They threw me under the bus with a sexual offender. Mm. Like, I mean, could it really get any worse? And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, this... <laughs> This is bad. So bad. So what ended up happening is a few days went by and I was forced to make a public statement that I'm, I mean, by forced, I mean my own integrity would not just let this one go under the rug, right? At some point, some things get so bad where you're like, you know what? I'm not going to say anything. This one hurts so bad on so many different levels. I, I got on a live and I spoke my truth. I said, I am not a racist. I am not a neo-Nazi. I don't have anti-Semitic beliefs. I I have zero sexual predator. (laughs) Like I had to like set the record straight because I actually had people messaging me asking if I was these things and that they were confused where it was coming from. Now at the time I didn't understand where it came from, but after legal got involved, I understood all of it. Mm -hmm. And, um, I am to this day very sorry that Veg News chose not to issue a public apology. I think they were afraid to do that. Um, And you know what? It doesn't matter because I spoke my own truth. I took two weeks off social media. I gathered myself. I took care of myself the best way I knew how and my mental health. And I came out and I shared my truth. And I received far more support than I did hate after that. And um, in a way, it it was a nice clearing for me. Am I still recovering from it? Absolutely. I've, you know, I, it took me months to bounce back after that. I couldn't have conversations with people in real life without feeling so much judgment from people, right? And um, yeah, those, these situations are not easy, but like, it's not like I woke up one day and it was just like I had done something wrong. It was like every ghost in my closet, a couple of people decided to like take out of the closet or I mean, it was... I don't even want to say in the closet because these are things that were out in the open that I already, already yeah. publicly apologized for. Well, and I right? mean, so, really, like these publicly apologized. Let's just take like for the record here. Like, what did what have you ever actually done wrong? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's, what's, yeah, yeah. that's I mean, it's like I'm apologizing for maybe even being doing something questionable or just something right? that someone so, else takes that they, that they were upset by that they personally exactly. are upset by. And like, I mean, that's beautiful, yeah. your right? humility so, and stuff. But like, let's just like be clear here, like. Someone thinking, well, where is this neo-Nazi thing coming from? No. Mm -mm. Don't even entertain it. This is just nonsense. Yeah. Literal nonsense. I think where it really got hurtful for me is when there were members of the community, and especially this group who was targeting me, who commented awful things on my pictures that I was saying, you know, I was just dating cash to prove that I wasn't a racist and that deep down I was a racist and I was doing all this to, like, somehow put up a front. I'll, I'll speak on that. Because I feel like I'm very qualified to do so. Like <laughs> we're talking away, about <laughs> racial issues, <laughs> African American issues, and like you know, people are trying to label you racist, and you're just dating me because it's convenient. And it's like before all of before everything was mainstream with um, you know black lives being slaughtered in the streets and all that. Like I was already interested in you. He was interested in me. We just had hurdles to overcome. And so people try to create these narratives once again to fit something that's convenient for their talking point. And it's like, no, I I had ties with Christina before the controversy. And no one, and two things I want to say, because I think people really need to understand and see this fully transparent. The trouble that Christina had to go through Veg News, it only took one person who was running their account to make that call on whether she should be removed based on the information that was provided, which is unfortunate because with media outlets of this magnitude, we put the public puts trust in information being at least give me like give me ninety percent valid. But yes. if you're not even validating right. your source, like at least have the decency to reach out to me and ask. And, and right? then the second thing I want to say is that if you didn't have sources and you're thinking about removing her, I'm like the most qualified source to ask. Yeah. And nobody throughout this entire Veg News fiasco 
reached out to Cash to ask how he was feeling about any of this. Which is absolutely bizarre, because if you're just talking about, let's just even take the people who are accusing you of this, who are saying that, that, oh, you're, you're just using him. I mean, they're literally, they're, that they're thinking that they're doing something that's trying to help the black community, right. when really, they are insinuating that you're not smart enough to know if your own girlfriend is using you, which is just yeah. so horrendous. Right? Seriously. Horrendous. And to further elaborate on that, because I, I just really feel like this is, definitely needs to be heard across a lot of ears in America or just in the world. Um, the whole civil rights, slavery, like we're talking about 1950, 1960. And it's like, yeah, you know, these companies and outlets and organizations and people is like, you don't think I don't have family members that integrated schools, you know, first African Americans that integrated high schools, middle schools, they're still alive. You don't think I know what racism looks like? I got stories from first account witnesses who've experienced it from coaches mm -hmm. and teachers family members so it's like if you needed a source you could have yeah. had the courage to speak to me about that and if we're going to talk about like black voices matter you definitely just silence mine so now you're like hypocritical at the same time because you're trying to cover your own mistakes but silence me at the same time when all this could have been avoided if we would have had uncomfortable conversations from the beginning instead of just being afraid of the peer pressure of the cancel call-out culture. But, you know, it takes time and energy for people to do that, but you got to have the courage to admit, like, I'm thinking about removing you. Can I talk to Cash about yes, this? Yes, absolutely. And, yeah. and and just um, the, the fact that they're not seeing the hypocrisy with not being willing to discuss with you just yeah. completely, it's just insane to me. Yeah, I for me... I felt offended and I had to express that to Christina because it weighed on me as well. And it's like, you guys are trying to label someone that I care, care deeply about, been around my family, is assisting my family to get um, reverse their diabetes, um, help my mom reverse her arthritis, but she's racist. I mean, do the math, it doesn't add up to me. Mm -mm, it doesn't, it's just common sense, honestly. Yeah, so this person, Christina, like she cares deeply about people. She has so many people that come to her retreats of all nationalities. We don't put a filter on who can show up. Like everyone that comes in to her retreats or co-op, they experience love and it's genuine. And it's like, I'm, I'm being present for you. I know I have an image, a brand, but it was built off because I cared about, I was outwardly focused of the community who needed someone like me. I think hypocrisy, thank you, babe. That was very sweet. Oh, you like that? You. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> very sweet. Um, I think the hypocrisy runs, I think even if Fedge News had said, can you explain one thing to me? It was almost as if, I mean, because keep in mind, I've had a relationship with them ever since I used to sell their magazines at my co-op back in Texas. Yeah, that's how we know it really wasn't about that. It was just right? about being afraid of being so canceled. And if they had known anything about me, just for anybody who's wondering, well, how did all these things just magically pop into the air? Why were you accused of so many things at once? It's like, well, it was almost as if people who disliked me decided they really didn't like me. And since it was a general time of people being canceled at the time, we don't like Christina. I think let's just like throw her under the bus because of X, Y, Z, Z, Z. And I think as well, when people started accusing me of having anti-Semitic beliefs or being a neo-Nazi, I'm like, do I need to explain to you? I was raised by two immigrant parents. <laughs> My mother is Lebanese. My whole family is Lebanese. I mean, it's like, but see, the thing is, is that defending yourself even in that way makes you look more guilty, oh, yeah. right? And so well, no, they just don't, they, like, you're just not allowed to do that. Yeah, you're not allowed yeah. to do that. <laughs> so it's it's like you gracefully take the heat and you apologize, which is what I did. And it, you're always going to have people who still hate you and you think that you've, like, you're carrying the scarlet letter to a certain degree. But I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kind of in the camp where I'll apologize if I really believe I did something wrong. Same. Right. Personally. There's a way to navigate it. And you have to, I always say, you have to know yourself better than the people that's judging you. Right. And I feel like I did it exactly what was good, like appropriate for me at the time. I don't oh, know if you amazing. saw the video. Amazing. But I, You're so humble. It's amazing. I, yeah. I feel like I did what was, was best for me. And something that I'm working on is no longer carrying a scarlet letter. Mm. Because that is not something I choose to carry, nor ever was it my intent to carry. Mm. Right? Other people don't get to decide <laughs> yes. for us in that way. We yes. get to decide. 
mm-hmm. right? How we carry ourselves and how we show up in the world. And this goes down to like when Andrew's telling me like, who cares what people think about you? Why are you letting this affect your actual real life? Yeah. You know, like, cause that's like, a, like you're saying the Scarlet Letter, like, like carrying other people's burdens of their own lack of common sense really because what you're saying is like you're like i'm a good source come talk to come me, talk to me right? <laughs> and also just the knowing the history of, of just your life and your relationships just it it's gotten to a point now where names are being thrown around in such a watered down way it's muddling down watering the word that it, it loses its meaning and it actually provides protection for the real white supremacists the, yeah. the ones who actually yeah. are these things because it puts all these huge this huge amount of people in that camp because the moment you disagree with someone the moment i don't like what you're saying you're this but like hold on like i know that these people don't actually believe this they're just saying it because it's what's the word we were like trying to come up we couldn't remember last night um we're blanking again yeah, i know oh <laughs> <laughs> we, i know this oh a uh, virtue signaling virtue, virtue, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes because yeah. i know like because this comes down and since you're talking about the george floyd like when everything was happening i had just given birth to Kofax a week and a half prior I was in baby land. I was in just like not really on social media at all. If I was, it was for like, a, you know, maybe yeah. half, maybe two minutes, you know? Yeah. And then I'm just starting to see like, I'm just getting a massive onslaught of um, comments for not saying, speaking in a way online publicly about George Floyd that most people were talking. Yeah. And um, I'm seeing over and over again, just like white supremacist, neo-Nazi, all these all these labels and in in my head I'm like I know these people don't really believe this like I know that they like let's give let's give some what's the word where you just benefit of the doubt yeah, you yeah. know yeah um yeah and I'm also I'm just the type of person where I'm I'm going to speak when I have all the details I'm not Same. the type of person to just jump to speaking on something when I don't like know much about it cuz really anytime anything huge comes out in the news that's really meaningful and important I I inevitably get a lot of people and I'm sure you do too, messaging why aren't you talking about this you need to be talking about this you need to be talking about um Mauna Kea. you need to be talking about Australian fires you need to be talking about every little thing and not saying those things are little let me just be clear I probably misspoken that way but um yeah it's just one of those things where I'm going to be true to myself and I'm going to speak when it when it's very genuine and yeah. what I really want to say. So that just reminds me yeah. of that. Yeah. And I, so I, I get what you, I just want to add to what you're saying. Like world events matter. Mm, yes. But when the event is very controversial and gray, we need, sometimes we need like personal, personally, some people need more time to just assess what's happening. And when you're speaking about the George Floyd, like we all knew that a man being murdered in the street is not right. Everyone knew that. Not, everyone I don't know knew a single that. person that, that thought that what happened to him was okay. Not a single person. Yeah, everyone knew like, okay, that's wrong. Maybe some people were quick with their assessment and saying like, let's go take this to the next level. Maybe some people were like, okay, what happened prior? Maybe some people were just trying to figure out where did, what was the combination of people, place, time, location to make this thing happen where a man lost his life? Um, but in the, in the social media online world, it's like, you're not moving fast enough with this conversation, and I got an issue with it. And it's like, just give me time to just process. We all, like, that was a traumatic experience for the world. We all ex- process and experience trauma in different ways. So to jump to an uh, assumption, like, yeah, you should be able to move through this. Like some people can't even watch uh, two action films that's too violent because it's like blood and, and, and stuff. <laughs> no, all up. It's a good thing that you don't do that. I, yeah. I, I can't make it through them. I yeah. mean, that, the people, their body, their emotional state gets triggered by stuff like that. And we saw this, like this was not scripted. This was not acted. This was just live mm. life happening with uh-huh. something we thought we would never see. And I think for this world, it's a great case study to show like, yeah, we all experience trauma differently and we all move through it differently. And there's also what we were kind of talking about last night about how um, being afraid to say the wrong thing. Um, uh, and I think that really, that actually ties into what, what something I wanted to read, a quote, uh, a statistic that I was reading about. There's a new Cato national survey that finds that self-censorship is on the rise in the United States. Nearly two thirds, 62% of Americans say that the political climate these days prevents them from saying things that they believe because others might find them offensive. So when it comes to this experience, I, I totally saw this all across the board from so many people being like, wait, 
this isn't the right way to say this. You need to say it this way. And so many things to just having grace with people and understanding that this was a huge life of it, life, uh, yeah. uh, news event. And there's anyways. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, with people kind of like censoring them. Well, I don't want to use the word censoring, but I think people evaluating their words more carefully. Um, you can still speak your truth and not be censored, mm-hmm. but I think you have to understand how is it going to come across and because yeah. I, I don't I don't feel like people need to be censored, mm-hmm. but they just need to really think it through. Like, how is it about my tone? Is it about the pacing of my comments that is going to offend someone? Is it my uh, my mannerisms? Mm-hmm. There's so many things that trigger people. Yeah. And the reality is, like we said before, like you're literally you're not going to be able to get everybody to understand you. There are going to yeah. be people who misunderstand you. So I do find a lot of inspiration from people who just speak exactly what they want to say and know that, you know what, some people are not going to understand me it's and going to see it everybody. differently. It's yeah. not for everybody. And I find that super inspiring. And that's actually something I want to continue doing more on this podcast. That's why I started one of the reasons why I started the podcast, because I'm the type of person that like. Instagram captions just hold me up. I, I'm sitting there and I'm like, uh, I can't fit it yeah, all yeah. in this one little caption. And I don't want to make sure I'm not misunderstood. I want to make sure I'm covering every aspect yeah. of things because I want to acknowledge all the different people's perspectives and experiences and, yeah. you know, not make anyone feel like when they're looking at, well, you didn't speak on to me. What about what this, pers- this thought, you know? Yeah. And so I like podcasts being like a long form, able to kind of cover so much more yeah, depth. It's a uh, thought provoking mm-hmm. where it's just making you think past those, your, your own social constructs, you mm-hmm. know? So I think thought provoking is really a yeah. good label for it. For sure. And I yeah. think podcasts are actually like not hit their peak yet. They're just majorly on the rise. It's yeah. a new way to listen to long conversations um, as opposed to like sound bites and small little nuggets and just really have a more nuanced conversation and get into that gray and that middle yeah. middle discussion. Yeah. Um, I think like rounding it out, the, like something, an overall theme that I think is so important for like everyone to take away from whether you're online or whether you're not is just like... Um, not letting how other people think about you dictate your reality, mm. you know, absolutely, and that it's a challenge. It can be, it can be a challenge. It, yeah. it can, it's a skill. That's something that my husband is super good at. It sounds like you're really good at that cash. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and honestly, and you look how much you like what all you've gone through and look how strong you are, Christina. Like it's definitely <sighs> made me stronger. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, but I, I would say continuing to show up with love and mm. grace in every case scenario. And, to continue to strive to be the best person of yourself. And if if anything ever comes in the way of that, like really the best thing you can focus on is focus on you. Mm-hmm. Not, not for that to sound selfish in any way, but it's very easy to get caught up in the thoughts, assumptions, and in, in that pain of what mm-hmm. other people are projecting onto you. But if you just stay focused and you stay in your lane and you're kind yeah. and you're focused on bringing love to the table and being a vessel of love, I truly believe that that is where... The growth yeah. happens. Well, yeah, and the growth really does happen to your mind and your choice because it is your choice to let other people's opinions affect you. Yeah. It is my choice. Yeah. When I'm like, you know, having a day where I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe all these people think these things about me. Yeah. I feel so misunderstood. I wish they understood that this is what I'm actually thinking. Like, that is my choice to let that yeah. ruin my day. My, I, anyways, go ahead. I was going to say for me, there's this specific moment in my life where I had that breakthrough moment of like, yeah, I can be myself for the rest of my life mm-hmm. and be okay with it. It was at a pivotal, pivotal time in my life where I needed a job because I wasn't working at the time. And I just came out of a bad, the previous job was just, I, I just didn't enjoy it. I felt like I had to be someone else to fit like their narrative of like what the employee is. And I got let go from that job and I was like, you know, I'm either going to work for myself or the next job I'm going to have, like, I have to be myself or this is not going to work. Went through a few interviews and ended up talking to one of the managers. And I told him, I just said, I said, hey, man, like, if I can't be myself at this job, I can't work here. Like, I don't, I don't want, I don't want this job. And I was like, man, what did I just say? Because, like, sometimes you're just, like, you're in the mm-hmm. emotional state of, like, I need my freedom mm-hmm. more so than me trying to be logical, like, I might lose a good paycheck. Mm-hmm. And it came out so fast, I was like, okay, let's just see what happens. Yeah. And he was like, 
Because at that time, I knew my character very well. And that's why I said you have to know yourself better than the people that's judging you. Mm -hmm. I knew myself very well. So I said, if, if, I, if these people accept me, they're going to get the best version of me. And he was like, do you like being like this? Like, are you being yourself right now? He was like, cool. I like it. And I was like, I was like it's okay. Like, I, Because it was that moment of like, I spoke my truth. And I feel like a lot of people are scared to speak their truth. But what happens when you speak the truth and someone confirms that it's okay to be that version of yourself, you're free mm -hmm. from people's perspective of how you should be. Mm -hmm. And now it's like you have this opportunity to really like take off in life and just like be an impactful player in society. And um, I think a lot of people need to put themselves in positions where it's like, no, this is me. I need you to accept. It. And if you don't, there's a tribe out there that's ready to welcome me, mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. That was like amazing. That's an amazing way to end it. Well-rounded yeah. way to end it. Is there anything else, I mean, that we should say from this topic? Because I mean, that I mean, you just said it all right there. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Got to show up as an impactful player in society. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. I just want to say like, Ellen, thanks for having us. I know. Thank you. We I am you. so honored to have you guys here. Like and yeah. talk about this topic. I think it is such a fantastic conversation. I'm sure we could go on and on and on. And just like, you know, trying to figure out the the conclusion. Like, so where do we go from here? Where do yeah. we go? How do we how do we all collectively like move to a place where we can hear other people's um, like their stories, their intentions and like just listen more before jumping to conclusions in real life as well in your relationships. Like, I, I mean, how many times in our relationships in real life have we like jumped to a conclusion thinking someone had this intention when they actually yeah. didn't? And we should just listen more. Um, I think um, I think a good place to start is within your own community of friends mm -hmm. because our friends are on social media but like what's better a better the practice is in real life in real life situations of like trying to provide that feedback um, and even asking people are you even in a place to receive feedback yeah. because sometimes the the feedback that's in our comment section no one's asking like hey you ready for the, the slander i have for you <laughs> and i'm not saying like it needs to be slander but you need to sometimes you just need to check with that person and, and say like i have some things i need to express to you are you in a position to even hear me out right. yeah and, and I, yeah yeah that's to me that's this that's a great area to start and see where it leads from there i Sorry, do you have something to say? I was no, can can you on? Okay, so I was gonna say something that we were starting to touch on, but we forgot that this is like something we definitely want to talk about was the online live how easy it is to live in an echo chamber and how you yes. want to follow someone because you love what they're about and you agree with what they're saying and how easy it is to just assume that you agree with everything that they believe in. Yeah. Um, and the moment they kind of veer off the course you think that they should have, it's really easy for a lot of people to just jump ship, be like, peace out, I'm gone, yeah. unfollowing you. I don't like what you think yeah. what you think is wrong and not only wrong but immoral yeah. because you disagree I disagree with you and I just think that does us a huge disservice to our humanity and society and our culture yeah. because we are never going to find anyone who agrees with you on everything on everything yeah, you know it's like, like it's, and we need to hear other opinions I personally like to listen to people and follow people who disagree with me on certain things because I think we did talk about that aspect but but the importance of just hearing everybody out and like not assuming uh, that you know there's this malice behind someone who disagrees with you about something because it helps yeah. you to right. have a stronger understanding of why you think the way that you do yeah. anyway. so I think it's important for anybody listening anytime you're entering a conversation or making a post consider how you can create more unity instead of division hmm. and I think that's important because right now yeah. every single person without thinking is creating more division, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's all about what I want and this is right, this is wrong. It's like, it's all about division, division, division. But I think that if we just shift our perspective a little bit and shift the way we are coming into conversations, uh, we can easily find a way to foster more unity. And I think that is really what we need. That's such a good point because we really need to just like meet people where they're at, understand that people have hurt in their life and traumas and just yeah. try not to take things personally. And anyone who does, you know, hate me and have all these, you know, nasty negative things about me, or even if they're just negative and disagree, or, like, it's okay. Yeah. I can yeah. let people think what they think. And at the end of the day, like, that's okay. Yeah. That's all and, right. and it's also okay to consider that some people might not have the tools in their toolbox that they need 
to mentally, physically, emotionally handle certain things. Mm -hmm. And so the way that they are lashing out is the only way that they know how to to actually cope with the situation. And and we can also learn from ourselves and how can I grow? How can I respond better? Because that's very humbling. It's easy to just be like, I got it Mm -hmm. all together, this person. When really it's like, no, we all all got our own things going. I mean, we're always going to be adding more tools in our toolbox. (laughs) Yeah, like looking inward, you know, because it's easy to be like, oh, that person, maybe that person's going through a hard day, you know, but I also need to look inward like, hey, where am I at? Where do I need to grow? What am I, you know, contributing in in a way that needs to grow? So I always got to approach the conversation saying, how can I bring more unity here? Right. That's, and that's perfect. Yeah. I, I mean, I think this is this. Let's call it a wrap. This is this, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it's I a love great it. way to end. This I think was, this is a unified table. And yeah. I like yeah. it. <laughs> totally. Ellen, yeah. thank you so much. Of course. Oh, we my gosh. You. This is amazing. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next episode, guys. Thank you so much for joining.